What's going on everyone? You're back with your boy Jono for another quick math lesson. Today we're going to be looking at compound interest in the real world. And specifically we're going to be looking at what happens if the time periods change a little bit. In the last lesson we spoke about why time is so important. And we can see again by changing that power, that n power, we can have massively different results even with the same set of circumstances at the very start. A really common example is if you buy shares from a company, they might pay you dividends or pay you interest biannually or even quarterly. So instead of getting one big lump sum at the end of the year, you might get two smaller sums halfway through the year. But how does this actually change your earnings? We're still getting the same percentage per year. And if it does change your earnings, how can we show this in a test? So in our biannual example there, the compounding events double, which means that n becomes n times two. There is twice as many times that this thing ticks over. But if we're getting paid half yearly, we don't get the whole rate for every single compounding period. We get half of the rate. Because if I was getting 6% per annum and I got 6% twice a year, that would be way too much money. So instead of getting 6%, I get 3% twice per year. So you're probably looking at this and going, so what? So the n's times in two, r's dividing by two, we're still talking about the same numbers, but because we are looking at changing the power, it does change what our outcome will be. For this example, we're gonna look at the same set of circumstances, but one's been compounded yearly and one's been compounded twice per year. So we've got $7,000 at 8% for five years. The annual compound is exactly the same as we looked at in the last lesson. We've just got 7,000 bracket, one plus 0.08, all to the power of five. If you throw that into your calculator, you get the answer of $10,285, which means we've made about 3,285 bucks worth of interest. So now if I look at the biannual one, I've got my $7,000 still, one plus 0.08, and I'm gonna divide that by two because I'm getting paid out twice per year. And then the power that goes at the top is five multiplied by two because there's 10 payment periods. The way that I kind of remember it is whatever I do to n times two, I do the exact opposite to the rate. So divide by two. So you're going to add in the same number twice, just times at the top and divide inside the bracket. So if you type this into your calculator, you get $10,361, which is 3,360 bucks worth of interest. So you can see incredibly quickly that obviously the biannual one is a lot more. These numbers are pretty small. It's not gonna change your life that you made an extra 80 bucks over five years, but you can see how if we're dealing with really, really big numbers, this could become a significant amount of money. So it is something that companies definitely are aware of because it can really change their total profit or total loss based on the circumstances. One company that definitely understands the power of this changing of N and the rate is credit card companies. They obviously lend out money to customers and we pay it back when we borrow that money. But a lot of these credit card companies charge interest daily, so it's compounded daily. So that means our N is times by 365 and our rate is divided by 365. Again, we said 80 bucks doesn't seem like that much, but if you've got 80 bucks over millions of customers throughout the country, you can see why these credit companies are doing something like this. A small change for one person means massive profits across the board. So the average credit card holder is in debt $3,105 at a rate of 19% per annum. We've been looking at a lot of examples with these interest rates between kind of five and 10%. So 19% is massive, and that is something that you've got to be aware of if you are gonna get a credit card straight after school. So this means that we've got quite a lot of debt, $3,000 at nearly 20% per annum, and these guys are compounding daily just to make sure that they're getting all the money they can out of you. So if we leave that debt, that $3,105, how much do we owe after two years? And we're going to say that this is compounded daily. So our principal is 3,105. We're gonna say our rate is 19%, but it's compounded daily. So I'm gonna divide that by 365. Then our N is two times 365, because that's how many times this thing's gonna compound over the life of the loan. All I've gotta do is the future value is equal to 3,105, bracket one plus 0.19 over 365, all to the power of two times 365. So the answer for this is $4,539. So this means you've paid $1,400 in interest just to the credit card company for the privilege to borrow that money. So it does seem like a little bit of a waste. 
So making sure that you're on top of how these interests can really, really accumulate over time is incredibly important. It will work in your favor if you're investing, but if you've taken out a big loan, the more interest periods is definitely worse for you. For example, just have a crack right now of using the exact same numbers, but not compounded daily, but compounded yearly. You will see why these credit card companies want to charge this high rate of interest every single day because they make quite a lot of money across the board. Thanks so much for watching this lesson, guys, and I'll see you later.